So I think definitely for the people who are working on the, the editorial side, um, we have actually, I'm not the only person in my department who has a classics background. Mm. Um, I think, you know, you have a lot of some, I mean, they also all have more art history experience than I do. Um, but I think in the, in the publication side, it sort of makes sense to not necessarily come from that heavy art history focused background because to a certain extent, um, we're representing, you know, someone who exists outside the head of the curator who's writing, you know, um, the book or the label or something like that. And we're representing maybe the voice of, um, or not the voice, but, you know, we're sort of advocating for a visitorship and a readership who some of them are definitely going to be academics and art historians and, you know, people who are really passionate about, you know, the artists who were displaying. But you're also trying to speak sometimes at the exact same time and through the same text to someone who is happening in off the street um, and says, you know, oh, uh, this looks like a building that I should go into. What is this? Um, and, you know, the books that we, we publish, certainly we want to fill them with scholarly content, um, but we also want them to, to be readable and we want them to be inviting. And um, there's a constant balancing act between those two. Um, they're not mutually exclusive, but it's helpful, I think, to have a sense of, um, what there is outside of, you know, the academic art history realm to then bring back to that and say, you know, this is, this is another way of looking at this. Um, and I think that's an important part of the process.